Good morning. Our opening hymn is number 431, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, 431. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. And welcome, everyone. It's great to see everybody on this sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time, where, with, as the song says, we're called to look at everything, look at all the greatness of who God is and the way in which that comes into our lives. And, of course, Christ continues to reveal more of that, even with the law that he presents to us. But it's also uh, to look at the different things that have been happening this week. It's been National, the week, uh, National Week for Marriage, and today is the World Day for Marriage. So we'll have a special blessing at the end of Mass for all the mar married couples and those that are discerning that, that gift of marriage. But God does continue to allow his light to come into our lives. So as we prepare to enter more deeply into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Let us say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands every man's deeds. No one does he command to act unjustly, and to none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of these least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. 
you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with a brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Rakwa, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quick, quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you owe vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the king, great king, do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Kevin was concelebrating with us last night, and I looked over him and I says, wouldn't it be nice if we could turn our hairs to a different color? <laughs> but it isn't for us, is it? To see the dynamics of God and to see the way in which his beauty works in our lives. Today we have, and for the next few weeks, we will still have the readings from the uh, Sermon on the Mount, where Moses, or where <laughs> Jesus is seen as another Moses. He's gone up on the mountain. Today, notice what takes place. He's given the commandments a new light. Moses had gone up on the mountain and received those commandments in stone. And Jesus is now is expounding upon those commandments. But I wonder how it was for those people that were there, that were listening to Jesus. What was it like for them to sit through this whole Sermon on the Mount, to listen to these new words? Their heads had to be spinning with all the insights to these established ideas that they had of living out the law, what most of us now call the Ten Commandments. But how about those thoughts which must have been flooding in upon all the people as they listened to Jesus? Not only for the people that were there, but as we will also learn, the religious leaders of the time, those that will accept these new insights, and those who do not. 
Or even think about Matthew's community. community. They were made up of both Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians. Matthew was writing his gospel to them roughly 40 years later or after Jesus' death and resurrection. We're always looking at the gospels, aren't we? All the readings in the New Testament through that lens of the resurrection. It shapes everything in our life, in our understanding, that power of the resurrection. What did it mean for those early Christians in Matthew's community, especially those Jew Jewish Christians, and the enduring validity of the law and what it meant for them to follow these new interpretations, or the Gentile Christians, and having to change their ways and now follow these new ways? What about the struggles between both groups getting along and flourishing in Christ's ways? Many difficulties that we can even see in our communities today, can't we? But I think in this reading, Jesus clearly points out what his intentions are for them in following the law. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of the letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. But I think for this homily, I don't really have to go through each of these commandments which Jesus has elaborated on. They pretty much speak for themselves as they elaborate on the law, on anger, adultery, divorce, and oaths. Next week's the readings will continue with retaliation and love of enemies. Seven sacraments, they're all a great source for preparation in receiving the sacrament of reconciliation. But we are not called to do it alone, to go through this life. I think this is where the second reading from Corinthians fits in. As I was reading in John Bergsma's uh, commentary, he points out that his in his commentary that here St. Paul speaks to us of the Spirit, which may seem kind of at odds with our other readings, which have the theme of God's law. In it, Bergsma points out that it is St. Thomas Aquinas who reminds us that the new law of the covenant, new covenant, is nothing other than the grace of the Holy Spirit. What is often missed is that the Jewish feast of Pentecost was a liturgical celebration for the gift of the law at Mount Sinai. As we celebrate this memorial of Pentecost, God poured out his spirit on the early church giving them the true law written not on tablets of stone, but on the human heart. What does this mean for us? That the Holy Spirit wishes to reveal in our hearts and our consciences the moral truths which cannot be escaped from, as this reading is implying. The Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. This might help, or I hope it does. I remember a particular group of young adults who had come to our bar and restaurant, our restaurant and bar, I should say, in the late 80s, over by Schooner area. It was out in the country. They were from and had never been out of the inner city of New York. They were all from poor neighborhoods. They had no idea what life out in the northern uh, woods, rural country of northern Wisconsin was like. They were still living with the idea of cowboys and Indians. It was evident in their faces and their expressions. But as I began to think about this, I began to wonder what would it have been like for those who did not want to make the trip and refused it. 
by preferring to stay in the inner city, they would have never known or grown from that experience. We can be like these kids from the inner city if we don't allow God's wisdom to enter our lives. We can hold it off at an arm's length. It's like the people who come in to confess their sins, and it's usually been over a year or even a lot more. The confession sometimes goes like this. Father, I'm a pretty good person. After all, I haven't killed anyone or stolen anything. And I have been faithful. And they're probably correct that they are pretty good people. But is that why Jesus came and went to the cross? Was for pretty good people? He came because we are all broken people who sin. Even our thoughts and our desires lead us to sin. And it causes harm. Otherwise, we would never have been, otherwise, he would never have been crucified. Those who had him crucified most likely thought they were doing the right thing. But what they had done, so to speak, was to build up walls around the commandments of the law, which helped them to justify their own actions. Jesus would also like us, to see how we are to have him do more for our lives, such as open our hearts to the meaning of today's scripture on the Sermon on the Mount. He wishes to see our hearts turn to a casual, causal understanding of what our hearts can do, which also requires the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of wisdom, opening our hearts to make of them the hearts of flesh, which only God can give us through his Son and the Spirit. So let us pray to the Holy Spirit that he may help us have hearts of flesh. And so we say, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us a fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations. And let us rise and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God knows the desire of our hearts, and so let us bring our prayers before our merciful Father. For all who shepherd the church, he heeding God's will, may the Lord grant them wisdom to lead us in his ways. We pray to the Lord. For local and national leaders, may they look for guidance in working for peace and justice for all. We pray to the Lord. For people affected by the devastating earthquake in Tur Turkey and Syria, for the victims and all the injured, may the Lord bring them comfort in their time of sorrow. Let us pray to the Lord. For our military, first responders, and all caregivers, may they be supported by our prayers and comforted by living out their faith. We pray to the Lord. For all married couples, as they continue to live their vocation of love, may they witness to the eternal love of God and grow closer to each other every day. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer from the world's sins and injustices, may the Holy Spirit enlighten many hearts and minds to help surround and protect them. We pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, May God bring them to eternal rest in heaven with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. For Elsa Burke, whom we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Now please pause and add your own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join us in praying the vocations prayer. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families. Bless our children and choose from our home souls needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, you understand our every need. Hear the prayers of all your faithful gathered here through Christ our Lord. As the gifts are prepared, let us sing together number 398, drawn to you, 398.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll be using the fourth Eucharistic prayer this morning. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night. And gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. you praise father most holy for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love you form man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone the creator he might have dominion over all creatures and when through disobedience he had lost your friendship you did not abandon him to the domain of death for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the firstfruits for those who believe so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. He gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Our communion hymn is number 357, Miracle of Grace, 357.
this covenant you've sealed with your very body and your blood. Come claim your bride again with love that cannot end. For what God joins, no one can divide. Bread of life, bread of life. Those who eat this bread shall live and never die. Bread of life, bread of life. Your true presence in this holy sacrifice. Bread of life, bread of life. Those who eat this bread shall live and never die. Bread of life, bread of life. Your true presence in this holy sacrifice. Bread of life. And for those that are at home who may not be able to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer this prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <clears throat> And please remain seated for the prayer after communion. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the things I forgot to do, include in the prayers of the faithful was uh, prayers for the people that are, the women that are on retreat over in Hartwood. So please keep them in prayer as, that the Holy Spirit may continue to enrich and enlighten their hearts and minds the love that they have for them on that retreat. The men were there, of course, a couple weeks ago, and they were saying how wonderful the retreat was. So, uh, Come and listen as several parishioners share their first faith story on Tuesday, February 21st, following the 515 Mass. There will also be a Mardi Gras dinner, which will be served immediately following the Mass and the faith sharing. Uh, may we... Uh, can I see a, what, how many people here would be interested in going to that Mardi Gras dinner and that face sharing? We're trying to get an idea for how many people we need for the dinner that night. So if you could raise your hand. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Thank you. Adoration will be held uh, on Wednesday, February 15th, this Wednesday. There's a sign-up sheet on the back by the script table. Uh, please sign up if you're available. It's a great time, but it's going to run from 10 o'clock until 3 p.m. for the school hours. It's a great time to come in and pray, pray for the children that are in our school and also for all the staff and everybody else that are there to, that help also in so many different ways. Or else just come in and see what the Lord wishes to speak to you in your heart. 
Tickets are on sale at the parish office for Awaken with an internationally renowned speaker, Paul J. Kim. It will take place on March 26 here at Nativity. Tickets are $20 each. If you're wondering what to do with your last year's palms, please bring them in and place them in the tote that's located over by the, between the doors on the entrance of the church uh, by sen uh, Sunday, February 19th. We'll burn those palms up and we'll use those for the ashes for on Ash Wednesday and stuff is what we're going to do. Also, we're looking for a sponsor for a bus trip to the cathedral for the Chrism Mass for the school students. Uh, we're going to start that yearly event of going up to, this, up to the cathedral to get people, with the children acquainted with the larger church and to see our cathedral. How many people haven't been up to see our own cathedral in our own diocese? This gives them an opportunity to do that. Also, we're looking for a sponsor for the Easter candle. I know people have done that in previous parishes. And so now if we could have all married couples and those that are preparing for marriage just to please stand. Let's raise our hands and give them a blessing. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman so that they might enter in a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of all the people that are gathered here so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness upon them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Increase your love in them and strengthen the bond of peace so that surrounded they may, by the people that come into their lives, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And please rise. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in his sight. Pour out in abundance upon you the riches of his glory and teach you with the words of truth. May he instruct you in the gospel of salvation and ever endow you with fraternal charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ending. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And have a great Valentine's Day, everybody. Our sending hymn is number 386, Go Out, Go Out, 386.